Hey, welcome to the video. Good to have you back here. Today's video is going to be another one on proposal examples. We've got a nice comparison here. It's from a high ranking university. It gives a detail of, I guess, a proposal at an earlier stage before the supervisor has commented, and then also a proposal that has been commented on and been improved. And I think is at a really high level and a really good example of an excellent proposal. So let's go through this now. The first one we've got here, example one, working at it. And I think this is the, the more underdeveloped example. So the title we've got here, I'm just gonna highlight it, an exploration of the perceptions and experiences of negotiating employment and caring responsibilities of fathers in post-divorce separation and co-parenting situations. Wow, there's a lot going on there. And I can maybe start to see that this is the underdeveloped one. There's too much, there's too many topics, too many themes, and so really it needs to be broken down. I would just try and reduce that down into two or three coherent examples. There's a lot going on in that title. And we might get that flavor now as we go through the dissertation. So the introduction they've got here, so it's nice to see that they've got some literature in it. Okay, so this section here, it's talking about fatherhood, but again, it's broad, it's wide. You know, there needs to be a narrowing and a focus, and that will come probably later on with discussion in the supervisors, trying to do and contain too much and relate to too many different understandings about how fatherhood can relate to some of these different interesting things. Moving on to this second section, what I would say, too many terms. It's addressing such a wide array of aspects of fatherhood, from identity to divorce to separation, gender roles, masculinity. So I would suggest, you know, there needs to be a, a greater thinning down of, of the actual sample population which is going to be looked at. So on to the research questions now. And I think this is a continuation of the, the underlying negative comment that I've been getting out there. And this its orientation is to too many distinct angles that they're looking at the fathering of work, the role of adoption and perception, the orientation to paid work. You know, all of these could be a legitimate piece of research in their own right. And really, you just need one key research question. And you might have a couple of subset questions spinning out of that key research question. But there doesn't need to be like there is here three separate strands of question that you want to look at in your research. So having that focus is important. Okay, so now on to the data collection. And here it's certainly detailed. They're talking through about how they might obtain the data, having informal groups, participant observation, ethnographic methods. It sounds a little bit like they're just throwing different methods out there. Again, what is the selection going to be and what is your criteria for choosing it? It's almost like excitedly they, they want to cover it and do everything. And perhaps maybe they're wanting to impress. Onto the sample then in this second paragraph. Here they're talking about their fathers. Again, there's a lot going on in terms of where they're going to be from, what sort of occupations are going to be, what types of organisational culture. But at least they are thinking this through and they're thinking about different strategies and how they'll go on to analyse this. So in this section on data analysis, they have a good understanding. They're talking about grounded theory. They're also talking about some of the limitations and, and issues. They're talking about research philosophy and trying to obtain a reflection of an objective reality. And they're also talking about methods of coding and how they would have to look at the phenomena, different levels, finding different themes. I think it's pretty good. Obviously, what this doesn't have then in the next section, it hasn't got a plan afterwards, but it's of a good length. And this particular university department has, has positioned this as one that has underlying weaknesses and in comparison to the second one is one that was at its earliest stages of formation. I think it's good. Obviously my, my central comment is it's just doing too much. We pick that up from the title right at the beginning, trying to involve too many different strands, themes, sections, and that probably runs throughout. So my main comment if I sat down with the student would be, look, we need to be more singular. We need to find some key relationships that we want to study. These fields of fatherhood, of work, of childcare, the way that you've looked at it, it's become quite complex. So we need to refine it down. So on to proposal two, and here we have it here, forced to serve consumerist identities in contemporary police governance. What a great title that is. A nice kind of throwaway line, forces to serve. 
and then we can see how it's kind of fashioned in kind of academic context, just in the choice of words that they've got. We've got a distinct group in terms of the police and governance. We're looking at another group in terms of consumers and also how the identity of that has become fashioned. Interestingly, the introduction, this is really good. Good literature, good reasoning, trying to understand this kind of neoliberal ideological pro progression, how consumerist ideologies have started to take up positioning in some of these public sectors, such as the police. They talk about the history of that, give a background, the developments of public sector management and how managerialism has started to appear within this sector. They also give some lovely definitions of different terms, uh, trying to reconstruct this notion, this relationship between the state and citizens. As we go further down here, two paragraphs, where they're talking about the, the empirical focus, the structures of that. They start to understand this positioning of the consumer, uh, how they are symbolically formed. So they've really got that good academic language in this proposal. This is an excellent kind of introduction. Remember, it's there to justify, to kind of provide a context. They do this in an historical understanding of developments and progressions and a reasoning and a justification for that. Here then we have the theoretical contributions. So they'd already done that, I think, in the first part, but more so here, they really solidify in the language, in the terms, in the literature, in the substantiation about what they're looking at. They're talking about some high-end theorists as well, and you can see how they're gonna find these definitions and relate it to this form of police governance that we see in the modern public service. They've also includes some clear research aims and objectives, which is really good to see. And they've understood how to produce this and what the relationship is. It just adds that clarity and that easiness of understanding about what the aims are and the objectives. It's so easy to pick up and understand when it's encapsulated in these explicit forms. We've also got the, the methodology in this section here. I would say that this is a lighter part of it the weakness, I would say. It doesn't really go into any real great detail, any discussion. It's going to be an ethnographic study, you know, maybe talk some more about the ethnography, how long it'd take place, the issues of, of, of gaining access, some of the limitations of ethnography. There's lots of types of ethnography, new forms of ethnography that could potentially be used. There's ways that this section could have been extended and had a, a greater dialogue and be more rigorous in its approach. The ethics would be important if they're actually going to speak to and do an ethnography with a police service and therefore how that would be conducted and carried out. Importantly, how are they gonna get access would, would be a concern and how are they gonna guarantee that? It's obviously gonna be quite sensitive if they're gonna be doing an ethnography of a police force and some of the information that could come out, some of the opinions, uh, and there'll be real ethical considerations and issues which need to be thought about. There's also a very good outline at the end here, so we can see the, the timetable, uh, how it's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, uh, the processes of writing, and then they've got some references at the bottom as well. So my final comments on this, I think it was a really good research proposal. In particular, the outlining in the introductory part in terms of the rationalizing, the justification, the basis of why this research should be carried out. It was really situated well in literature and it really argued and contested and positioned it amongst academic thought, which is so important. So that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you got something out of it. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.